Hello YouTube fans, Richard Lewis here with another video, the first of 2016, so uh, indeed Happy New Year to uh, all of you and all the people who've supported this YouTube channel, supported my work in 2015, and you can be sure there's going to be some good content uh, coming your way very shortly, but um, this first video is going to be a retread of things I've talked about on Unfiltered over uh, in, in Chan Man's channel. Uh, and of course uh, on Trash Talk, which is in this channel, uh, episode 40 specifically. And uh, that is a particular article uh, that was on Destructoid uh, by a writer called Jed Whitaker. Now, I, again, I'm, I'm still at a loss to really just explain how, how stupid this article is. Uh, and in the interests of appealing to my social justice warrior friends... Uh, if you get triggered by stupidity, you may want to skip this video. Uh, but uh, this was an article by, by Mr. Whitaker called Gaming Needs More Safe Spaces, uh, which is a very interesting premise and, and one I would never particularly subscribe to. Um, he opens the article with the definition of what a safe space is, which he defines as a safe space as a place where you can be free of harassment, regardless of your politics, race, nationality, and gender or lack thereof, because uh, obviously you can you can have no gender now, uh, just non, just a, a, vac a gender vacuum. Uh, he talks about how there's protests across college and university campuses across the United States with students asking for safe spaces, and he says safe spaces aren't just for real life. The world of gaming will be better off with more safe spaces as well. Now. This is one of those examples of the thing that I find super infuriating about what's happened over the last few years, and that is that the there is a movement uh, from this very extreme leftist outlook to basically infiltrate areas of culture, subcultures, and indeed the mainstream, uh, and infiltrate it, and then apply your insanely progressive to the point of stupidity and again I'm loath to use uh, the word progressive to apply it because progressive implies you make forward progress well none of this is actually progressive at all um, but they they apply these rules to something that absolutely doesn't need them never needed them to, to combat problems that they've largely invented and we're seeing this happen repeatedly and gaming has been a um, huge victim of this uh, it, it certainly didn't need another set of people demonizing it. Gaming has been the go-to, the, the go-to issue, the go-to you know monster in the closet for so many years now. In, in the press, you know, it was it was there pretty much. Oh, if you play games, it encourages violence. And then, of course, it was uh, links to terrorism and school shooting. And, and then it was gaming addiction and we're all addicts. And it just kept going and going and going and going. There was no need for another group of people to just come along and be like, oh, OK, well, we're uh, weirdly obsessed with identity politics in modern society, modern Western society, of course. Uh, and we like to somehow blame gaming for any perceived deficiencies on top of all the other shit it gets. So this is pretty much the crux of the whole Gamergate uh, issue in a nutshell, that for the longest period of time, games journalists and commentators and people like that have been working against the gaming community they make a living from, almost as if they were like double agents who've infiltrated it and are trying to take it down from the inside because they have such little fucking self-esteem and pride in their work. They all would rather be writing about something else other than gaming. So they project their oh-so-important political thoughts into stuff that should just be essentially just about, you know, this is a game, this is what we think about this game. You know, it should be critique on the basis of quality, not critique on the basis of whether it affects your feelings or not. And I'm all for uh, highbrow academic literary dissections of cultural touchstones like books, film, TV, and games. But that isn't this, you know. This is... Uh, um, what, what we're getting now is pretty much an application of 
things that are so far removed from anything to do with gaming. You've got to do all these mental gymnastics to even have a serious conversation about it. And of course, it's not just games. It is happening to films and TV now. You know, I saw an absurd article in The Guardian right now saying that um, the latest Star Wars movie uh, was the Black Lives Matters movement's first sci-fi movie. It's astounding that any editor would allow that into print, let alone in a publication like The Guardian. It's just a nonsensical postulation uh, predicated on absolutely no evidence and all sorts of, uh, again, these, these mental gymnastics you have to apply to make your point stand up. But anyway, back to, back to Jed Whitaker's article about safe spaces. Now, for me, the first thing I would say is, vast amount of gaming takes place in your home, okay? This is the ultimate safe space. This is my little sanctuary. This is my office. Okay, I've got everything in here I need. I can come in and chill out. I've got a sofa. I've got a TV. Um, I've got my books. You know, I've got, I've got my workstation. I can do whatever I want in here. I can exercise and work out in here. I can chill out in here. I can get drunk in here. Whatever I want to do. And I, and I game in here as well, okay? And this is my fucking little retreat away from the world. I couldn't be any safer here. Not even my girlfriend gets to come in when I'm recording a video. It's it's um it's hermetically sealed. Um you know, this is this is my space. So the idea that if I play a game and some words on the screen are affecting me, um I got a question again, this definition of safe spaces. Safety is when your physical well being is, is is being threatened. It certainly isn't if someone calls you an asshole in the middle of a game of fucking League of Legends or Counter Strike. That there's no no threat to your safety whatsoever. Um, and if you want to extend it to emotional uh, the, the emotional safety, which I'm I'm not even sure I would, but let's extend it. Then the reality is, uh, I, I was I was raised by parents that gave me coping skills. Um, so if I did get called an asshole, or if somebody did call me names, uh, I had the requisite levels of self-esteem and sensibility to be able to deal with that without it cutting me to the core and, and, and rendering me unable to leave the house and getting all these physical manifestations. Uh, I would argue, and I don't even think this is an argument, but, but I guess you have to say that, if somebody calling you a name in text form or in speech form in a computer game uh, causes you all sorts of untold stress and, and triggers you, uh, then you need some serious therapy. You definitely don't get to come out and apply the fixes to your very individual problems to everybody else because the vast majority of people don't need those fixes. The vast majority of people can cope with being called an asshole, a cunt, a faggot, and we just go, get on with it. We just get on with our day-to-day. -to -day. It's that simple. There's a tiny, tiny, very vocal minority of privileged, white, middle-to-upper-class Westerners that feel the need to uh, stamp their feet and have their tantrums and keep shouting about how no one's respecting their feelings. When, well, the real world doesn't respect feelings. Reality doesn't respect feelings. It's that simple. It respects rights. You've got rights. The rights to there, there is no right not to have your feelings hurt. It doesn't exist. There is nothing in any statute or any law uh, that that's going to tell you you have the right not to have your feelings hurt. It's just it's a nonsensical standpoint. So I I I got a question. This idea that's a safety issue, but it's a deliberately chosen phrase because it it, it begs the question. Well, who would be against safe spaces? Who would be against safety? What kind of monster would be against safety? So that's why they phrase it that way. Uh, but, but it's got nothing to do with the reality of the situation. So back to his masterpiece, his opus about safe spaces. He talks a little bit how uh, he got called a faggot. Uh, and it was uh, really bad. Um, and it, he, he explains that what he did was he changed his name uh, to the tag LG to, to inc include the tag LGBT, which calls lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans. Uh, that's what it stands for. It's it's a it's a group basically designed to pigeonhole everyone. Um, and I know because I was back there when it was just the LGB um, when I went to university and I did a lot of uh, work 
uh, to promote gay rights. Now it's uh, very far removed from what um, from what it was trying to achieve at that time. Uh, but anyway, um, so you, he's uh, he's put this tag in there, and somebody has called them a a faggot, uh, uh, which isn't to even say necessarily they understand what LGBT is. Faggot, of course, is just a general word you will encounter on the internet. And as I've explained umpteen times, uh, the word isn't uh, tied to the... Uh, it, for a lot of people, at least, it's not tied to sexuality. It's tied to masculinity. Uh, in the UK, uh, we've got a, we have a practice in public school called fagging. Uh, and, and if you go to a public school in the first year, you will be a fag for somebody else. And what that means is you do all their menial tasks. You shine their shoes. You, you, you do this kind of thing. So when we call each other fags in the UK, it's got nothing to do uh, with, with what you do with your penis and everything to do with whether or not you're subservient to a more dominant older male. That's, that's the roots of it. I'm being told I have to ignore my particular cultural heritage uh, about private schooling uh, which, of course, is what all of our elite-level thinkers and all that all went to private schools, all had to be fags at some point in their life. Uh, but, um, yeah, apparently I have to ignore that, and I can't use that word now because a bunch of Americans uh, say that it's too triggering. Well, no, it's, it doesn't work like that. Um, so, anyway, uh, there's no even guarantee that it was, it was linked to him changing his name to LGBT, but that's what he's trying to insinuate. And, of course, he did wear the LGBT tag, which isn't to say that um, you should uh, hide who you are or what you are because people might say things. But you've got to understand there are fucking idiots out there. There are dickheads out there. There are homophobes out there. And if you make yourself uh, identifiable as one of these things in a space that really doesn't need it to be identifiable, um, then obviously you're going to get some assholes use that as ammunition to target you and, and, and to throw abuse at you in a gaming situation, be it to get a competitive edge over you, or be it just because you fucking owned them and they needed to try and reclaim something by insulting you. That's just how it is. The idea that it doesn't happen, for example, in mainstream sports is laughable. It does. I could show you a video of, uh, from the Premier League where a prominent Premier League footballer uh, bent over and parted his cheeks while blowing kisses at another professional Premier League footballer who was rumoured to be gay, not because he was gay, but because he was intelligent and could string a few sentences together. Uh, not the norm in a football setting. So... First of all, I, I just want to say that this idea of like, oh, it's so horrible and everyone hates gays on the internet, and all, it's, it's just not true. Um, and then he starts to talk about this, and this is really interesting. He starts to deflect about why he should be the one uh, who has to mute um, his... Why, why, why do I have to be the one who mutes? Why do I have to be the one who makes the decision and changes the setting? He says here... Um, he goes, I realize there are privacy settings to prevent strangers from sending you messages, but why should I block messages from others for fear of receiving messages like the one above? Why am I the one playing within the rules, the person to lose privileges? Surely Microsoft should implement a blacklisted words filter for sending messages to strangers in the same way it has for Xbox, Xbox Live usernames. Now, it's a completely ridiculous standpoint to take if you're an adult. Uh, why should I use the tools I have at my disposal to stop my feelings getting hurt when I'm the one that has the problem? Uh, why, why shouldn't everyone else be automatically penalized in advance for the things that I am saying are, are affecting me and only me and a minority like me? Why, why should I have to use mute? Why should I have to use these tools? Well, surely the answer to that is because it, it's for your welfare, right? I mean, you're the one saying it's about your safety and your well-being. So, therefore, it makes sense, doesn't it, that you would help yourself if you were able to do that? You know, now it's not, it's not exactly a great example, but I'll mention it anyway. You know, let's say, for example, you live near a rough neighbourhood, Right, and you have to walk through that. Well, you don't have to walk through that neighborhood, but there's a neighborhood there, and if you walk, you can walk through it to get home. But there's an equidistant way where you can go and avoid that rough neighborhood. Well, sure, you can say, I don't see why I should not have to walk through this neighborhood. Why can't the police just eradicate all of crime? Why can't we just change human nature? Why can't we just abolish poverty? 
Sure, you can do all of those things, you can say all of those things, but you're probably going to get mugged at some point. Just know that, right? Because you've been given a safe alternative, you've been given control, and you are choosing not to use control so you can moan about something, so you can complain about something. That's what this is ultimately about at the end of the day, that these people would rather not employ the tools they've already got, because that isn't a victory to them. That isn't a victory to them. If they uh, go out and uh, have to have to press the mute button, they feel like they've lost. Why should I? I'm the good person. Why should I have to do it? Sometimes being the good person, the bigger person, means that you have to act in a way that is the adult way of doing things. You have to be the one that walks away if someone's getting in your face. You have to be the one that fucking, uh, you know, is, is the bigger man. We hear this phrase all the time. You know, people, I find it hilarious because these are the same people who say to me, oh, well, if someone's abusing you, why don't you just ignore it? Why do you have to tweet back at them? You're an asshole. Okay, why don't you just mute the people in your game? Ah, oh, but that's different. That's different because it's me. No, it's exactly the fucking same. And you're acting in the same way I am. Uh, but I'm, I'm at least being honest about it. I'm not trying to censor anyone. I'm not saying take away his rights to call me an asshole. I'll just call him an asshole back and get on with my day. You want to take away that person's platform. Because that's what you guys do. That's the difference. So I, it's insane to me that you guys, these social justice warrior types, would rather fucking expose themselves to the abuse that apparently triggers them and upsets them so much because they don't want to have that like, oh, but I, I've lost the battle by having to press a mute button. It's truly pathetic. It's a pathetic standpoint. And then he talks about, I mean, this is just fucking insane. He talks about um, safe spaces and he goes, we need safe spaces, not just from hateful messages, but emotes and assholes humping your corpse. So let's talk about emotes Right, Hearthstone was deliberately designed by Blizzard to avoid having a chat system because we all know what the StarCraft chat system's like. Where it's just cancer this, cancer that, fuck you, you're a scrub, haha -ha, noob. That's just how it is. The game is so fucking stressful and victory so hard fought and that there's so many different ways you can lose a game uh, that obviously it, people get fucking mega pissed off about it when they lose, especially if they lose in ridiculous circumstances, like they get cheesed or something. People fucking go ham about it. Now, Blizzard know all this. It, it, it's a well-documented phenomenon. So when they made Hearthstone, they thought, well, let's not have a chat system. Let's not have a chat system. Let's have an emote system. Let's have basically uh, a, a, a group of pre-made emotes, which are like greetings, thank you, sorry. Right? They did that deliberately to avoid triggering fucking retards like this Mr. Whitaker. That was the whole point of it. That was literally the whole point of the design philosophy. You're even limited to how many emotes you can do in a, in a certain amount of time. Is that, good enough for, is that good enough for Mr. Whitaker? No, of course it isn't. He says, if you've ever played Hearthstone, you're probably familiar with its emote system. Instead of being able to directly message your opponents during matches, you can click on your hero and select pre-made emotes that include greetings, well played, thanks, oops, threaten, and sorry. At first glance, these emotes may seem pretty harmless. They are fucking harmless, mate. They are. But when people spam them or say that at certain times, they can be downright angering. So hang on. Now Safe Spaces includes... It's not just about harassment, but if, if something makes you angry... I mean, you, they keep moving the goalposts. So what? You're, now, now I can't even anger you. Your 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 gaming experience has to be that. You know, I, I can't even trash talk you if, if you win. I can't do anything that might annoy you. I can't do that now. That that's violating the safe space rule. And he goes, at what point during a player versus player competitive match can the sorry emote be used in a non sarcastic way? And I've said this before. Uh, and it's embarrassing that a games journalist, or someone posing as a games journalist, wouldn't even know this. As someone who plays Hearthstone, if you ever go away from the keyboard or take a particular long time to take a move, uh, or you disconnect and you come back and because of that they've been waiting in limbo, of course you say sorry that happened. Or if you get some mad fucking RNG right at the end to win a game and you know you should have lost, you say sorry to your opponent. It's actually there for good managed purposes. Not for you though, is it, Jen? Not for you, mate. It's too much, in it? Triggering you in your little safe space because someone says sorry and you can't figure out if it's sarcastic or not. What a fucking douchebag. Now, what I find particularly interesting is, as he goes on his article, he talks about teabagging. 
Now, we all know teabagging. Teabagging in, popularised in Halo, moved on to Call of Duty. We do it in Counter-Strike as well. Uh, it's where you bounce something down with the crouch mechanic on somebody's corpse who you've killed. The idea is you are teabagging them. Teabagging is, of course, dropping your testicles into someone's uh, mouth, I mean, um, predominantly. Uh, so they're like teabags dangling in a, a teapot, just so you know. Just so you know, because it's nice to know these things. It's a sexual practice, of course. Uh, very pleasant, uh, so I'm told. Uh, but uh, that's what teabanging is. So uh, the idea is that, again, to make a joke out of how you've dominated your opponent, you squat over them, you bounce up and down, and you teabag them, you drop your nuts in their mouth. Ha ha, you got wrecked. Where's the problem? Well, for, for, for Jed, obviously uh, lo lots, of, uh, lots of problems here. Um, he says, uh, sometimes players take a game mechanic and use it as a means of harassment. And again, want to define harassment here. Harassment is a prolonged and sustained form of antisocial or threatening behavior you cannot get away from. And it's persistent. Teabagging you once in a game, not harassment, never harassment. Cannot be considered harassment by any rational mind. Sometimes players take a game mechanic and use it as a means of harassment, with the prime example being crouching on dead players' faces as if to press their testicles against them, a practice better known as teabagging. Teabagging is not only unsportsmanlike, but also simulates sexual assault and abuse of a corpse, no matter how you twist it. Well, actually, mate, you have twisted it there, because it, it, it's beyond a fucking joke what you're saying. It's beyond a joke. You're saying we're all virtual necrophiles if we indulge in a bit of teabagging. Which, by the way, according to you social justice warrior types, isn't necrophile just another sexual choice? That I can enjoy and shouldn't, shouldn't be prejudiced against by just like having sex with corpses? What's up with that, bro? Anyway, I, I find it amazing that somebody who would play a game by his definition that simulates murder and you're okay with the murder, but the point where the testicles go into the corpse's mouth, that's where it's gone too far, is it? Not the taking away of life, but the, the testicular uh, involvement of, uh, that comes afterwards. Very weird, isn't it? Like, you're quite comfortable playing games. Uh, that promote violence and promote this toxic masculinity that you're so fucking often harping on about, which doesn't exist, of course. But um, that's fine. See, you'll give yourself a pass for playing those games, because let me guess, right? Just like the censors who sit on, like, film classification boards and they say, hey, we'd never get corrupted by a film that's got fucking 40 minutes of sodomy followed by 40 minutes of beheadings. It wouldn't warp our minds. But the plebs and the peons out there, it would warp their minds. So you give yourself a pass for playing these games because you're like, hey, they never affect me, right? I'm, I'm progressive and liberal and all that other good stuff, right? It's only the retards that, of course, we, we need to take their violent games away from. But then teabagging particularly triggers you. I don't know what happened. Maybe you got attacked by a scrotum as a child. I don't know. But this this triggers you. This is so you have a problem with this, and then not the murder. So again, it's it's a ridiculous standpoint to take. Uh, and then you even say we could fix teabagging like it's an issue. We could fix teabagging by removing crouching animations from post kill camera shots. So you want games developers to completely recode their games because teabagging makes you cry that is it in a nutshell that's your argument in a nutshell what games developer would do that i mean actually i better not ask that question because you are starting to get humored by some of these people because of your constant fucking mob justice and trying to take people's livelihoods away every time you encounter something that is mildly problematic for you uh but it says, I'm not saying players should be forced or punished for teabagging. Uh, I don't know what that means, should be forced. Forced into what, whatever. Uh, forced or punished for teabagging. Just having the option of not experiencing the act, if you so choose, would be welcome to many. Well, again, I don't think many people think about it. I think if you play a game, I think if you enter into a culture, it's got to be tacitly understood that you may encounter elements of things that do make you slightly uncomfortable or you don't like, but it's definitely not up to you to change what the majority considers a societal norm. That's not down to you, all right? That you, you know, you can, you can observe the phenomenon. You don't have to take part in it, but certainly taking it away from everybody else when it's a staple of the fucking gaming culture is ridiculous. So anyway, obviously the whole article's ridiculous. But the one thing I wanted to sort of end on was, 
how these people are fucking always, always, and I mean always, hypocrites. Uh, what, the one thing I've noticed about these very vocal social justice warriors that write these articles and try and politicize gaming and try and take away your right to enjoy games how you want to and uh, make you feel bad or culturally inferior or or racist or misogynist or whatever it is for simply enjoying computer games these people always and i mean always project so for example uh with jed here's here's somebody who's talking about safe spaces in gaming and how he doesn't want to have to encounter assholes and people who say bad things while he's playing games well I got sent a video of one of his Let's Plays uh, for the sequel to Plants and Zombies, and, well, you can just watch this for yourself. Oh, hey, kitties, it's your old friend, the Jenner Petters, and I'm here to play Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. Let's go kill some fucking cons, right? I beg your pardon. Oh man, these servers are as slow as molasses. My asses. <laughs> Get it? Asses? That's funny. Let's play some multiplayer. The welcome mat. That's why. That's your mom. Because I wipe my feet on her. Get it? Because she's a bitch. <laughs> so hang on. You've just used two misogynistic slurs within a very short space of time of starting your stream. One is cunt, which I don't have a problem with, but y'all call it misogynistic, apparently. Uh, even though nobody uses it to describe uh, female genitalia, it's just too good an insult not to use uh, about people. And you also imply that the viewer's mother is a promiscuous doormat who you would wipe your feet on after having sex with? I don't know, mate. Sounds like the kind of language that could trigger somebody. Let's do gardens and graveyards. I wonder if my grandma's still in the graveyard. <laughs> She's dead. Mmm. Mm, I'm drinking a beverage. It's got alcohol in it. It's called Jägermeister. Look it up, kids. It's good for ya. Okay, now we're encouraging children to drink alcohol, which... Again, far be it from me to take your language and turn it back and, and uh, onto you. Um, isn't that really irresponsible? Wouldn't that be something that might encourage those children to do something that isn't safe? Aren't you now kind of violating their safe space? They're watching, uh, I presume, just to see some dude play some games. And certainly this game isn't uh, 18 plus like alcohol consumption is in most countries. And uh, here you are, encouraging children to drink alcohol. Seems a little bit irresponsible, in my opinion. Just saying, just saying. Uh, let's watch some more, though. See if it gets better. Mmm. There's some whipped cream on top. Mmm, it's getting in my mustache like cum. You know what? I need some more. Oh! Mmm! 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 Oh, do I look like your mom? <laughs> Clearly your mom doesn't swallow or you wouldn't have been born. Am I right? Well, m mother jokes aside, uh, I mean, it, haven't you just potentially enacted a, a, a sex act there? It looked a lot like someone taking uh, a load in the mouth and you specifically referenced cum in it. So why is teabagging not okay? But, uh, again, you want to stream simulating the <laughs> gory aftermath of oral sex. Why is that okay? I don't know. It kind of feels like, I don't know, is my safe space being violated right now? I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to watch on. Zing! <laughs> oh, I'm going to play as a pea shooter. You know why. So I can shoot pee all over people, all over bitches. Bitches and cunts. Oh, yeah, big loads I'm gonna shoot on people. Okay, right, let's go. We're going in. We're going in, okay, there's a cloud. Smoky fucking cloud. Looks like I'm blazing it in here. 420, am I right? Blazing faggots. Oh, look at this faggot. He's being a real cunt. Oh, they got it. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I've definitely been known to blaze it, right? I don't think that's a secret, right? But, but, didn't you just say the F word? Like, you're co you've already called your opponents that you're playing against on your stream, cunts, bitches, and you're also using the word faggot now. Now... I guess this is where you play the, the 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 card. Well, they don't they don't know. I, they can't see my stream. But but I thought these words were slurs. I thought they were off the table. I thought we couldn't use them. I thought anyone who used them was a bad person, right? I mean that's generally the stance that the social justice warrior brigade takes. What makes you so immune? And keep in mind, this is a stream, and you put it up on YouTube. So people might stumble across this video, and you might trigger them inadvertently. They might just want to watch a playthrough. Oh, I know him. He writes for Destructoid. Very progressive. Let's see what he's got to say for himself. What, faggot? Well, oh my me. Ah, uh, that's going to just tip me over the edge and drive me to suicide now. And it's all because of you. Imagine, Jed. Imagine my surprise at what a massive hypocrite you were. Like everyone else in the games media that fucking sermonizes the people. They fucking got it, these pieces of shit. Not that I give a fuck. It wasn't my fault these faggots couldn't keep themselves in the fucking score zone to keep the fucking cunty zombies from getting it. Listen, you can at least take me out to dinner before you rape me. Am I right? <laughs> rape is so funny. It's so funny. Rape, huh? Rape? Now you're using the word rape? Holy shit, hold the phone. Hold the phone. This is like... That, that is the ultimate social justice warrior taboo, right? We, we've we we've come at a, to a conclusion now that fuck George Carlin, this word's off the table. It can never be funny. It can never be used in any circumstances other than the glorification of the sexual assault of women. And of course, only women, by the way, because apparently men don't get raped. And you're saying it? You're saying the R word now? So you've gone cunt, bitch, faggot, rape? I mean, Jesus Christ, if social justice warriors see this, you're going to get excommunicated, Jed. They'll, you can never be part of their treehouse again. This is career suicide, what you're doing. Oh, look. Oh, oh, I'm dead. Like your grandpa. <laughs> that old bastard deserved to die, am I right? Now we're rich, so fuck it. Who cares? All right. Again, I, I don't mind. My, my grandparents are dead. All of them, I think, actually. Maybe I'm a little bit older than you, Jed. Maybe that's the norm. But uh, there will be somebody, again, who stumbles across this video who has lost a grandparent, maybe even recently. Somebody that they love dearly. Somebody maybe that raised them because their own parents didn't want to. You know, it'll be, there'll be some story like that. And you're mocking it. And do you know what that does? That triggers them. That's triggering. That's what triggering is, right? When you hear something, you oh no, it makes me so sad because it reminds me of a real life experience. And even though it's an experience that's common to everyone, you can't talk about it because it affects little old me. You even used a trigger warning in your article. You said content warning it contains bigoted language and sexual violence. Well, where's the warning on your stream, Jed? Where's the warning on your stream? I don't want to be reminded about my dead Grammy. My pop pop, how he's pushing up daisies. I don't want to be reminded about that, bro. It's just too much, brother. You gotta think long and hard about this stuff. You gotta you gotta take responsibility and, 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 and think about your fellow man. Care about your fellow man. Don't be a shit lord. Let's see, where are we going? We need to defend this fucking garden because apparently we're a bunch of fucking women, right? Like dudes don't plant gardens. Dudes plant fields because we're farmers. Women plant gardens because they're small and fragile. Like a fucking woman. Am I right? Fucking cunts. So now, you're reinforcing segregated gender roles. I haven't even played three minutes of this, Jed. You've just gone absolutely wild here. What was happening? What was happening in your life? This is unreal. If I'd done a stream like this, you'd have been among the angry mob wanting to take my job away. How? How is this... A fair and even playing field. 
Women only go in the garden? What do you think? Is it because this is satire now? Did I miss a meeting? Is that what it is? Are we going to invoke the S word to, to dig yourself out of this ridiculous hole that you're in? Oh, let me guess. <laughs> Men dig holes, right? Uh, come on, bro. This is, this is absurd. This is literally absurd. Oh, look at this zombie. Oh, look at this. Yeah, you like it? You like when I shoot my pee on you? <laughs> I raped his head off. Now that's funny. Fucking dead. Blew a load right on his face. Hey -o. Let's go see what kind of cunt sluts we have up here. Raped to death. Oh, yeah. Oh. You know, sometimes you get raped back when you're trying to rape. Turns out they're into rape. It's a thing that happens. I mean, this, at this juncture, I, I, I just don't even know if I need to play anymore. So, we, we've, we've gone from just everyday kind of normal slurs that the average gamer would embrace. I mean, you're the guys that want to take uh, our right to say these things away. You're the guys who want to police our language. But now you've just said that when you rape a woman... Sometimes they rape you back because they're into rape. I want you to just let that settle in for a moment. And, and I mean, this is, this is vulgar. This is awful, an awful thing to say. That's what uh, a lot of um, rapists and rape apologists actually say, isn't it? That they were asking for it. They wanted it. And here you are, a progressive social justice warrior writer, echoing that? Publicly? You should be ashamed. Now, if I was like you, Jed, what I'd be doing is, I'd be showing this video to the editors at uh, Destructoid, right? And saying, take this guy's job away. But here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt on this. Um, you're drinking Jaeger. We all say some crazy shit, right? And, you know, maybe there's uh, a context here I'm missing. Maybe... Um, there's, there's an ongoing joke here I don't get. I'd be willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Do you know why? Because I'm an adult. And I don't want to police your language. And I don't want to uh, take away your right to express yourself in a way that you deem fit. And I don't want to have you banned from things like Twitch and have you no platformed when you're basically saying women enjoy getting raped. I don't want to do that. Okay, I think we all make mistakes. And sometimes people can go a little bit too far. And I think if there's a take-home lesson, and I know you'll watch this. I know after we did the show, Jed, you made uh, the, the Trash Talk show, you, you made your tweets protected and everything. But hopefully you'll watch this back and you'll realize that even all of these things you've said, reprehensible though they are, they haven't actually hurt anyone. You haven't actually took anyone's life away you haven't you haven't uh took away someone's dignity you haven't made anyone feel threatened you've said a bunch of stupid shit on the internet and it's words and they come out your mouth and they're ephemeral and they disappear they don't hurt anybody you're not important enough to create a pro-rape movement you will just be dismissed as an idiot that's the reality so even when you say something as evidently deplorable as that it's fine it's 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 retarded, but it's fine. It doesn't, you know, no no one is hurt because of your words. We just look at you and we just think you're stupid. And we create little critique videos for you, pointing out how stupid they are without calling for you to be censored. That's how adults operate. So, anyway, the video goes on. I might even just tack what remains on at the end so you can just see the embarrassing... Uh, denouement for yourselves but I just wanted you all to see this because there is a recurring theme here and the recurring theme is this that these people want that they operate on a very ridiculous premise of don't uh, you know do what I say not as I do and they want to be excused from all the negative behaviors that they will castigate chastise and penalize you for they will try and synthesize credibility with, and, and, and use mob rules and mob mentality to try and gain uh, the attention of games developers to implement changes that appease them, but are probably viewed negatively by everyone else in the gaming community. They do all of this, 
And yet, when it comes down to it, they're the same asshole that me and you are. They're just posturing. They're posing. Being a fucking libtard to this degree is what gets you laid at university now. These people don't have principles. They don't have a standpoint. They don't fight for the cause. That's why they criticize gamers and ignore radical Islam. Because there's a chance that they might fight back. There's a chance that might be a bit too dangerous. These people are clowns. Clowns and hypocrites. And that's all they are. And every time one of them stands up and says something ridiculous, they never have the courage of the convictions to actually behave the way they want everyone else to, as evidenced by this video. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I think I've made my point. I will see you next time. Take care. Let's see. Oh, there's a zombie right there. Let's shoot that zombie in the face. Oh, killed you. Suck my roots, nigga. I'm just kidding. I love black people. I didn't mean it as a racist thing. It is a joke. Ha ha ha. It is funny. As long as I say it is a joke, then it is funny. Remember that. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, I got bitch slapped. I got raved like a cunt. Look at this Jor Jason Voorhees looking motherfucker. What a piece of cunting shit.